G'day! Welcome to Nevadia. Boo-doo-boo-doo-boo-doo-boo-doo-boo-doo-boo. How are you going? This is the eye in the series that I am doing with Grumpy Old Dude. What we're doing is we're breaking down the bite model for his old cult, a religious atheist church, which was once called the World Church of the Creator, but now goes by Creativity Alliance. I mentioned this twice in the interview, but I just want to make sure that you understand that this is a perversion of atheism. Atheism is not a religion. It is not a church. So please don't use this as a gotcha for the straw man of, aha, atheism is a religion, because it's not. This is a perversion of the atheist movement. Just as some Christians would call the Westboro Baptist Church a perversion of Christianity, this church is a perversion of atheism. Yes, I know I'm repeating myself, but there is a reason for this. It's because I want to make it very clear. This religion is not representative of atheism. Just to let you know, for transparency's sake, I have edited this interview just a bit. It's just to take out the ums and ahs, it's not to take anything out of context or anything. I also used a slightly older version of the bite model, but for thought and emotional control, I'll use a more updated version of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe to myself and Grumpy Old Dude. Hey everyone, my name is Meredith. Uh, welcome to my channel, Navadia, and also to my good friend Ed from Grumpy Old Dude. How are you, Ed? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so today we are going to go through the eye in the information um, control of the bite model. So, um, da Dave, I call you Dave again. Ed, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Said I'm changing my name. <laughs> you better. It makes it my life easier. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is a person that I'm good friends with who is also known as Grumpy Old Dave. So it's just confusing, okay? It's confusing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Susan, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Who are you? What do you do? Why are you on my channel? Why does my channel exist? You know, all those sorts of things. All right. <laughs> or why I'm does the... your channel exist? I don't know why mine does. I like who who wants to be on my channel? <laughs> I'm the grumpy old dude. Um, I'm an atheist and anti-religionist. I cover mostly hate groups on my channel um, for the simple fact that I am a former white supremacist and I am now an activist trying to fight against the hate that I once promoted. Awesome. Awesome. Good good work from turning around, by the way. Like Thank you. That would have that would have been a very interesting story. But we are not here for the interesting story. Although we could be also. Of course, links in the description below to Ed's not Dave's channel, but Ed's channel. Um yeah, so links, please go check him out. Go give him a subscribe or subscribe to me if you haven't done so. Um, because you know, let's let's all sell our soul to the YouTube YouTube algorithm anyway. What we're doing is a bite model breakdown of a church called the World Church of the Creator that now goes by the name Creativity Alliance. And it is an atheist church. Atheist religion, which is an oxymoron within itself. So what we're going to do is, if you don't know what the bite model is, it, it was written by someone called Stephen Hassan. He um, is just it's basically like a checklist. Um, he does a consecutive one, two, three, four, five, um, in increasing in um, severity and what the uh, how bad the the cult is or the certain parts in the, um, of the bite model is. However, Telltale, who is I'm. Um, using his idea, um, he's doing it the Fibonacci sequence because it takes more to jump to the next level, which means that it's easier to separate out whether if, if it's a, um, you know, it's better, easier to set, figure out if it's an 8 or a 13 or a 21 versus a 3, 4 and a 5. So we're going to go through with um, Telltale's idea, but using Stephen Hassan's bite model. So if you're not sure what we're talking about, that's what we're doing. We've already done B, of course, um, links in the description below. Now we're going to go on to I, which is the information control. All right, so you all keen for it? Yeah. Information control has subgroups. The first one is deception, um, which is one. So 1A is uh, deliberately withhold information. Yeah, um, 
definitely going to have to go with the 13 on that. The Church of the Creator that I was a member of, um, they do give you a lot of information as far as science and history, but it's twisted. There are things that are left out. There are things that are added to, you know, promote their ideas. So I'm going to go with the 13 on that. Did you want to give an example? Or? Um, okay. A uh, good example. When they first approached me about joining this church, it was because I had professed to be an atheist. And this is an atheist religion. They believe their race is their religion. And they promote that through pseudoscience. They show you documentation that says um, uh, black people have different, you know, DNA than white people. You know, things along those lines, which I later found out isn't inherently true. Mm. Um, that's not how evolution works. No, they, ha know. they have different markers. They have right. different DNA markers. Um, and different proteins that fold and things like that, but they don't, they're not a subspecies. You know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they put out their own version of paperwork claiming that, you know, black people are actually Cro-Magnons and Jewish people are, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <What? laughs> now, if, if you're young, like I was at the time, and you don't really know a whole lot about these these sciences, you know, evolution and everything, the paperwork they give you looks very legit. And it, mm. it will fool you. It, it has brought a lot of people into this religion. Mm. You know? And then, like I said, once I got older and I started studying things on my own and I realized that's that's not actually how that works, I kind of started changing my mind about things. But, you know, yeah, mm. they, they do feed you a lot of misinformation. 1B is distort information to make it more acceptable. Yeah. Um, again, I'll go with the 13 on that. Um, I, I brought it up, you know, on, on B about people in their organization committing acts of violence. They will push it as this person is a, a martyr now for our cause. They're a hero. They're supposed to be, you know, looked at, you know, as a great person because they went and murdered someone of a different race. It's like, uh, if someone doesn't die and they go to prison for committing acts of violence, they're supposed to be viewed as a prisoner of war because mm. this church is at war with anyone who's not white. What would you give that? You said 13, did uh, yeah, you Yeah, definitely go with the 13 on that because they, they, tr they say they don't promote violence. But at the same time, they're going to call these people martyrs and prisoners of war and they're heroes. You're promoting the violence they committed. Definitely 13. That's disinformation. 1C, uh, systematically lie to the cult member. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. The information they give you, they know it's not really correct, especially like history things. They try and claim like the Roman Empire was brought down because of Christianity and they promote their beliefs as being the most anti-Christian religion in the world. They know what's in history books. They know what historians have stated and everything. And it doesn't matter how old that historian was. It could be somebody from the 1400s and they're like, oh, no, that's Jewish propaganda. You don't believe that. Believe what we tell you. They have to know this isn't correct. <laughs> so just for anybody who is coming on to troll my channel, uh, atheism is not a religion, by no. the way. 
Atheist, being, being an atheist means that you are not religious. This is a perversion of atheism, this particular group. So just pointing it out there for those people who are about to go, ha, ha, there's an atheist. See, yeah, atheism now, is a religion. No, it's not. Although <laughs> these, although this group does claim atheism, they do claim a religion. The, the mm. religion of creativity is recognized in the United States and other parts of the world as a religion of its own, separate from atheism. So information control to... Minimize or discourage access to non-cult sources of information, including, so 2A is internet, TV, radio, books, articles, newspapers, magazines, and other media. I'm going to go with an aid on that because mm -hmm. they, they don't really, you know, force you not to look at that. They don't really discourage you to not look at that, but they do encourage you to look at that and then compare it to what the church says. And you'll see where the truth lies. To be minimize or discourage access to critical information? Again, I, I don't really think they minimize it. Um, they discourage it. They don't really force you not to read the you know local papers or anything like that. In my instance, when I did read some stuff on evolution and said, hey, why does this book say this? but you say this, mm. they'll start with, well, who are you going to believe, the enemy or us? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll go with an eight on that. Eight. eight sounds good. Eight sounds good to me. Minimize or discourage access to former members. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely 13. Um, that's pretty high up there. Me being a former member the only time they want to contact me is to threaten me or, you know, try and debunk at my actual science against them. And if you're lower down in this organization, you're told, hey, listen, you don't talk to this one. Um, he used to be a member. He is no longer a member. The only reason you need to speak to him is if you're going to punch him in the face. So a pleasant group of people then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're <laughs> so happy. Everyone should be one, a member of this <laughs> cult. Like, seriously, don't. No. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, that was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Keep members busy so they don't have time to think and investigate. Yeah, I... <clears throat> I'm going to go with an eight on that just because when you're first trying to get into this church, they will do that. They'll feed you all of their information, try and keep you working out, keep you reading their books and everything. And that's all they want you to look at. But once you're in the church and it's, it, you know, hindsight is 2020. Now I say it is once they had me indoctrinated, it was, okay, go check out whatever you want because we know you're going to come back and use our information to throw out actual information. Often I, I hear stories like this and I often think um, anti-vaxxers. Yeah, well, and this group's <laughs> anti-vaxxers too. They, oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't do vaccinations. And you can go to the doctor and get a checkup, whatever, if you need surgery, anything like that. Don't take any vaccinations and do not get a blood transfusion unless you know for sure the blood is coming from a white person. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, so really, really good, good, um, good group of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not, by the way. Uh, control through mobile phones with texting, calls, internet tracking, etc. Again, I I can't really speak on that. Um, I haven't been a member of this organization since 2004. And a lot of people didn't have mobile phones and stuff yet. Like they mm. were just really getting big the internet really was just starting to take off i don't really know how they go about that stuff um, okay 
So we'll call that a blank because of a I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but if you were to speculate, not that speculation is a good thing, but if you were to speculate, how would you think they would, would be going? Again, I think it would depend on how high up in the church you were. Probably the higher up you are, the more trust you're going to have and are not going to track your stuff. Well, because they're going to be the ones in control of it anyway. I would think for newer members, it's probably going to be an eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, information control part three, compartmentalize information into outside of us, insider doctrines. So 3A is ensure that information is not freely accessible. They don't really put any restrictions on that. They just highly push their information. Tell you, read all this, study this, you know, look at our science paperwork and read our books and pamphlets and everything else. But if you do go read something else, they'll look at what we have compared to that. Which one do you think looks true? You're hmm. a white, you know, you're a white man. What does that book say about white people compared to what our book says about white people? Hmm. They pretty everything up. And, you know, make it look like actual science and historical facts when it really isn't. I don't know. What do you think? Go with an eight on that? Uh, so uh, I would probably go five. Go five? Be yeah, because rem remember, if we go a little bit conservative, like the true nature will come out. And Yeah, yeah and like I said, they – they don't really try and hide any mainstream educational books or anything like that. They just try and debunk it with their pseudoscience. Yeah. Yeah. I would consider that to probably be more like a five, but you know. It's, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll err on the side of caution and go, go five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can agree with that. Yeah. Three B is control information at different levels and missions within the group. I think I'm going to have to go on with a five on that one too. Um, mm -hmm. They do to a certain extent, like, you know, things will come from higher up on down, but they kind of give a little bit of leeway on, you know, what you're doing to promote the church, um, how you're going about it, how much time you want to devote to it. If you're spending all your time studying instead of bringing in new members, well, that's fine. We can accept that. That's great. If you're not attending each and every rally, but you're still, you know, talking to somebody, trying to bring them into the church, that's fine. I'll go with a five on that. You know, as, right. as long as you're doing something to promote their beliefs, mm -hmm. they're okay with it. So let's say, for example, you uh, just entered the church and you're way down the bottom versus somebody who is basically a leader of said church. Do you think that the information is going to be different, like the different levels? To a certain extent, because if you're still new in the church, they're just going to want you to study. Mm. You know, don't really worry about where the church is going or how we're going to get there. You just worry about getting more knowledge yeah, of let's, our let's past. Catch you up. And, yeah. 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 Whereas, and, and I mean, they openly share with all the members and even non-members what the church is doing, what they're planning to a certain extent. Of course, if it's something really big and major that might cause some legal issues, they're going to keep that a little more hushed, you know, yeah. from everybody. Yeah, because um, Scientology, as you... Um, it go up through the ranks, you get told more and more stuff. Yeah. And so create, once, you get, once yeah. you get to a certain level, you go. Yeah. Um, creativity. They'll give you all the information you want right from the door. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in that case, what would you consider it to be? Yeah, really. I'd have to go really, really low and say a five because mm -hmm. there, there is some things that you're not going to know unless you are higher up. Yeah. No, fair enough. I, I, I agree with that. So five sounds good to me. 
Uh, okay, so you've got 3C, which is allow only leadership to decide who needs to know what and when. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm going to have to go with a five on that. Like I said, they don't really hold anything back unless it's legal issues or something like that, hmm. which that's not really holding back information about the church per se. No, yeah. no. I, I would agree with you on that one. A five, maybe even pushing to a two. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I could probably go with a two on that. Uh, would you go a two with control information at different levels as well, or just stick with the five on that one? I'll stick with the five on that because there are certain things that they don't tell newer members it, just because they're still in that feeling out phase. Can we trust you or not? Information control uh, part four, encourage spying on other members. So 4A is impose a buddy system to monitor and control the member. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with an eight on that. Again, especially with newer members. And I, I would say up until you've been in this organization for you know, maybe three or four years, you're always going to have somebody there constantly. Hey, what are you doing? You know, mm. who you talking to, what you're reading, things like that. And that's what, you know, from the last, last little chat, that's what got me in trouble is people mm. I was talking to that weren't white and yeah. somebody would always be going up telling somebody higher than me, Hey, he's still talking to the black guy. I would have them coming over. What are you doing? You know, why do you keep talking to them? How dare you? How yeah. dare you? Yeah. How dare you treat other people like they are decent other yeah, people? Yeah. You know, somebody I've known my whole life, but I'm just supposed to ignore them now and view them as an enemy. And tut, tut. Yeah. Tut, tut. <laughs> 4B, report deviant thoughts, feelings, and actions to leadership. I don't know. I'm going to have to go with a two on that. Um, no, I'll, I'll go. I'll definitely go a five on that. If if you were to be caught, you know, um, see, I don't know. Now I'm stuck. Uh, <laughs> they well, don't really focus so much on deviant thoughts or anything. And like I said, if, if you're caught making out, you know, or having some kind of affair with somebody who's not white, they're probably just going to toss you out of the out of the group anyway. Like you're mm. not going to be a member of their, their church anymore. But I mean, as far as thoughts, like, no, they don't really do the whole, you know, deviant thoughts thing. Nobody asks you, hey, have you thought about anything lately that you shouldn't? I don't know. I, I guess I'll go with a five on that. If you were to say, for example, um, you realize that you bought something from a, a shop that was run by someone who was not of the acceptable groups, were you compelled to talk to um, to elite, your leaders or something like that? No, and, and see, that's what I mean. Like, if you have to go out and buy groceries or whatever, try and buy them from, you know, a white-owned store if you can if you can't you got to do what you got to do it's kind of weird in that aspect they know that a lot of shops and everything are run by non-whites they don't really get on your case if you have to go shop there yeah so they, they're kind of reasonable in the sense that necessity breeds necessity yeah okay all right so uh I'm happy with a five if you want to go with a five. Yeah. 4C, ensure that individual behavior is monitored by the group. Again, it's it's on a time scale. I would definitely go an eight. You know, newer members, you're going to be looked at a lot harder until you've, you know, proven yourself and made a, a name for yourself and have a presence. Yeah, they're, they're going to be watching you pretty tough for for the first couple of years. So I'll go with an eight on that. Okay, awesome. Information control number five is extensive use of cult-generated information and propaganda, including newsletters, magazines, journals, audio tapes, videotapes, YouTube, video, uh, movies, and other media. Yeah, definitely 13. That's, 13? Yeah, that's going to be higher up because, again, they, they push 
their books and their newsletters and their information, you know, really hard. You are encouraged mm. to, even after you memorize certain things, you're still encouraged to, you know, keep going back to it and refreshing yourself, mm. you know, pretty normally. They don't want you to read a whole lot of things outside of, you know, creativity unless it's based upon white supremacy. But if you do, you're encouraged to compare it to other things within the church and hopefully come to their understanding of what the truth is. I'm happy with that. That does sound um, approximately 13. Yeah. Do they misquote statements or use them out of context from non-cult sources? Yes, all the time. For an example, I can't remember who it was, so you have to forgive me, but it could have actually even been Morris Dees from the SPLC said something years, and this was years ago, that most white people are, or most white women, I'm sorry, are starting to focus on women's rights and getting careers and not having as many children. And we look at this as an advancement of women's rights. The Church of the Creator, the group we're talking about, automatically jumped on that and said, see how he's pushing for our women to have less children. See how they're trying to breed out the white race. This is all a conspiracy. It's a ploy yeah. by the Jews to outbreed us and push us yeah. into extinction. The great replacement. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, they push that hard too, by the way. Wow. That's one of their big points for bringing people in. Uh, uh, well, that's yes. not good. Not good at all. <laughs> yeah. So that that's that's going to be up there on the scale because they definitely try and twist people's statements to make it look like it's actually undercover racism by the other side, and we're the victims. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Usually, usually the people going out and killing other people are the um, the victims, not the person being killed. No. 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 <laughs> so would you call that a 13 or 21? I, I would definitely say 13. Yeah. We'll... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Keep keep it low just so we, we know, if, you know, as we said, the numbers will show in at the end. And they don't really do it all the time, but everything they quote, they will try and put a racist spin on it. On to six, so unethical use of confession. So 6A is information about sins used to disrupt and slash or dissolve identity boundaries. Yes, yeah, see, I, I'm not even sure if that will, will make it on here because they don't believe in sin, you know, mm. or things like that. They don't ask you to make confessions about anything that you might have done. After a certain point, like I said, newer members, of course, they're going to be looked over and somebody will say, hey, you know, you shouldn't do that. This is why, you know, in our religion, we don't do this because we want to present this image. But it's not really looked upon as sin unless you really step out of the line and you're you know, you're doing drugs or something, and then they might sanction you for that. Yeah, they don't really ask you to come confess anything. They just, they expect you to correct it yourself. Uh, so what would you give that? I'd have to go with a two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I was thinking a two as well. Withholding forgiveness or absolution? Yeah, again, they're, they're really, there's not really any, any basis for that within this religion. I guess the only way I could compare that is if you do something that's viewed as wrong or whatever, but then you do your extra workouts, you read some of the, the books a little bit more and start promoting yourself as a better person, then yeah, all is forgiven. It's, you know, it's, it's mm. wild. But at the same time, there are certain things that if you do certain things like the R word or having sex with someone outside of your race, those are pretty much unforgiven. They're not going to forgive you on that. So I guess, I don't know, I guess I'd go with a five on that. Like I said, if you 
have any kind of emotional feelings for somebody who's not white, they're not going to forgive you. Yeah, no, five sounds good to me. And the last one is manipulation of memory, possible false memories. Yeah, no, not they they don't really try and do that. No, I've, I've never had that experience. I don't know anybody in this group who has had that experience. OK, so two. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, that's the end of the eye in the information control and the bite model. So thank you very much, um, Sally. Uh <laughs> <laughs> because I can never remember your name, uh, Ed. Thank you very much, Ed, for, for joining. Um, so let me know uh, who you are. Well, let not, I know who you are, but let, let people know who you are and yeah. what you do. And All righty. So again, I'm the grumpy old dude. Um, I have a YouTube channel focused mainly on hate groups, but we might be getting into some other stuff soon. Um, I'm looking into a couple of things and, uh, yeah, please come check me out, you know, look at some of my content. Hopefully you'll find something you enjoy. Yep. Don't forget to like, and subscribe to him. Uh, and if you don't know who I am, my name's Meredith. My channel's name is Nevadia. I do stuff basically. <laughs> bit of it, something for every everyone, like science, atheism, a little bit of my rambling. Um, yeah, so that's who I am. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to me either, please don't forget to do that as well. And click the like button, share and subscribe. And yeah, uh, don't forget, don't give yourself the raw prawn. After calculating the scores that Ed gave, the rounded off average score came to eight. This clearly suggests that there is a strong leaning towards a cult-like group. Please note that a cult doesn't necessarily have to meet all of the points on the bite model. In fact, if a group hits two on all of the bite model's categories, but a very strongly hits a 21 or one or two points, it may be considered to be a cult. While there were no 21s in the information control section, there were plenty of 13s, which is enough to be concerned about. I hope you enjoyed that. Please go and check the description for all the links and don't forget, don't give yourself the raw prawn. I just want to give a very special thank you to my wonderful patrons, especially my $10 Redback Spider patrons, Aided Furball, Lauren Hart, Mary Civitano, Amanda Vogue, Ross Devereux, and Atheist Pastor. I would also like to thank my $20 Platypus patron, Paul Butler. And just a quick reminder, this is the second video in a series breaking down the bite model. Please check the description below for the other links and of course, Ed's details.